How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now AMD's current top of the range GPUs, their RX 5700 XT, has been out for quite a bit of time now, but that still didn't stop me from taking a look at one of the best cards currently, the ASUS ROG Strix RX 5700 XT OSC, which is quite a beefy card as you guys can see, especially with nice three fans. Now, pricing-wise, the RX 5700 XT from ASUS is currently retailing for around $460 or around 12,500 Rand for here in South Africa. So it is quite a bit more expensive, but it's still not that much for what it's actually competing against. Now, like I previously mentioned, the RX 5700 XT is an AMD's current top of the range GPU, but unfortunately it doesn't take on something like the uh, RTX 2080 Ti or even the RTX 2080. It's more focused towards the top mid-range cards like the RTX 2070, 2070 Super and then the 2060 Super. It was aimed to go on for the uh, RTX 2070, but Nvidia canceled that card kinda and is only now the super ranges so it pretty much falls in right in between those now as for pricing differences between these three gpus the rtx 2070 super is quite a bit more at around 100 dollars or 4000 rand more expensive when taking a look at the rog strix cards whereas the rtx 2060 super and then the rx 5700 xt is pretty much at the same a price of around 450 460 dollars but now moving on from that towards the design if you've seen one ROG Strix card, you've pretty much seen them all. Maybe this one is a bit bigger than the others, uh, but they pretty much look exactly the same with this nice uh, gray cover. And then also the three uh, fans, which does perform quite well, pretty much across all of their GPUs so far. I haven't had any issues with their GPUs overheating uh, if it doesn't have a problem, which we'll get into. But yeah, it's quite a nice a big card. It does have plenty of support on the sides as well for the hefty cooler. And then also you do get a nice a back plate, which is always appreciated. And of course you do have some RGB. Now a nice thing that I do also like that ASUS added towards their Strix cards is that you do have extra uh, PWM fans here on the side. If you want to connect your case fans uh, to those, you can control everything right through the GPU's fan control. So it's just a nice addition, especially if your motherboard doesn't have a lot of a fan or PWM controllers. But I'm just getting back into the cooler. Again, this thing is quite massive with the cooler alone approximately weighing around 1.5 kilograms. So it's quite a beefy card. So if you do have any supports that you can add towards your motherboard, maybe just a GPU uh, support beam that would be nice, but also if your motherboards, a piece of express uh, slots uh, do have some of that armor, every company has their own naming scheme, uh, it will support the GPU from not sagging as much. Now for anybody wondering, they might have read this, uh, there was some issues with the uh, ASUS Strix 5700 XT's overheating with the initial release cards. Now that is completely fixed, it was with two screws just being a tad a bit loose, which caused the GPU to overheat because the cooler was so heavy but that's entirely fixed now and actually from my test the gpu never went above 70 degrees and the fans only stayed around at 50 percent so definitely not an issue now quickly for connections you do have three displayport 1.4s and then also an hdmi 2.0 b port and then as for power you do have a dual eight uh, pins that asus states uses around 300 watts however for my usage it never went above 250 watts so there should be a bit more headroom there now it's also worth mentioning that i wasn't able to boost my power with my overclock more on this card uh, it just didn't want to however i was able to add an extra 50 megahertz to the core and 200 megahertz to the memory just for that tiny bit extra performance on an already overclocked card. 
Now, just before we get into the benchmarks and see how this car performs, the some of the GPUs that I use was reviewed a while back and I don't have them anymore. So there might have been some updates towards games and drivers, which might impact performance. I didn't really see that, especially because I have also reviewed the MSI Mech RX 5700 XT, which we're also going to compare it against. And that didn't really show any difference in performance when I reviewed it also a, a while back. So. It, it shouldn't, but I just wanted to mention that. So with that, let's get into the benchmarks. So then from the benchmarks, we can see that the RX 5700 XT is a perfect 1440p gaming card, either on ultra or high settings, depending on the game, to get that higher FPS. Now, compared to the 2070, it pretty much beat it in most of the games. I only saw that kind of really in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. For some reason, it didn't perform that well, but that's also more to do with the game really being not optimized for AMD. However, I do think that Assassin's Creed Odyssey was developed with AMD in mind. I'm not exactly too sure again, I have to check. Uh, but yeah, that was quite a bit of a performance difference uh, there, even on the previous uh, card that I reviewed as well. So that's the only really difference that we saw. And also, of course, we did compare it against the competition a bit so with the MSI RX 5700 XT Mech. Now, the Mech is a bit more affordable than the Strix card, but it just kind of shows the difference between the top of the range cards of a certain range uh, compared to more of the entry level side of affordable side. I don't know what to call it really, uh, but it did show that it was around 2 to 7% better around there, just with a overclock supplied on both cars as well. So yeah, it was just nice to see a bit of performance increase there. So then pretty much in the end, your decision has to go around either if you want to go for ray tracing or you don't really care about ray tracing uh, because the IMD cards, of course, don't have any ray tracing as of yet, the new generation I will probably have, if the rumors are to be believed. Uh, so that will have one, but the 5700 XT does not currently. Uh, but in the end, yeah, it's just going to depend on what you really want. A bit more performance out of your card compared to the RTX 2060 Super, because again, that one does have it, uh, compared to more a bit more horsepower with FPS with the 5700 XT. So that's the only decision you kind of have to make. But yeah, that's pretty much it for my review of the... There we go. Asus... Strix, ROG Strix 5700XTOC edition. Again, it's pre overclocked. It's heavy. It looks good. I've actually used a lot of these in, in, in the past, so uh, they perform really well. So if you guys want to get it for yourself, I will leave links in the video description. A big thanks to Asus of Africa for sending the card over for review. And then also, if you like this review, please like, share, subscribe, and comment like always. And I will check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.